Welcome to Open Huang Lessons. I know, not much of a series available right now. We started from panic moves and now we're moving to something different. Huang is one of those characters who has a generic 13 frame mid. Well, then again, a lot of characters have generic 13 frame mids. And that one is the, the classic DF1. But that's not Huang's only DF1. He has a DF1 plus two. So in a sense, he has two DF1s. The important question to ask is, what is the difference between these two DF1s? Well, that's what this video, you know, it aims to answer, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. So let's cover very briefly what the differences are. So DF1 is plus six and is negative one on block. Okay. That's the difference. For, so we're covering frames first. DF1 plus two is plus eight on hit and negative three on block. The main key difference between these two, aside from frames, is the pushback. The pushback, you say, pushback. What do you mean pushback? When I throw out a DF1, it just works. I throw out DF1 to DF1. What if I told you, Horang can't do that? I know it's surprising, right? The guy who has all the plus frames in the world can't do it. So we're gonna set up the opponent here to do backdash. I have him backdash and I'm gonna press DF1 into DF1. Remember, Huang's DF1 looks like this. This is DF1 plus two, main difference. So here, I'm gonna reset it and I'm just gonna press DF1 into DF1. Here we go. Your eyes do not deceive you. That happened. Imagine Kazumi having this or Shaheen or Leroy or, or Geese. No, you could not fathom. You would cry. But Huang means it cannot cry with this DF1. I know, it's, it's insane. This does not happen if you use the standard DF1 in DF1 plus two. Ah, key difference, key difference. That's the main difference between these two DF1s, the pushback. Of course, this is not counting what options track after the moves on hit. It does not count. This is, we're not counting those. But I mean, if I just wanted to give a brief example, right? A brief, brief example. We'll have Horang here sidestep left. And I'll do DF1 into DF1. And wow. Or we have DF1 plus 2 into DF1 plus 2. Big difference. Okay, sidestep right. How about that? DF1 into DF1. Oh. What about DF1 plus 2 into DF1 plus 2? Ah. Okay. Clear differences have been put. So just the question is, the question is, how do I use these moves? And which moves should I prefer? Is there merit into using a DF1 that is backdashable and does not track or seldom tracks, right? Compared to a DF1 that tracks both ways-ish when it hits and uh, catches backdashers. I don't need to explain DF1, I don't need to, <laughs> I don't need to explain DF1 plus two. This is basically just a standard DF1. It operates the way it should operate. If you're in a situation where, let's say, you're plus five on block and the opponent attempts to step, uh, DF1 plus two will more or less do its job. DF1, however, may or may not do its job. It's very inconsistent. So you can rely on DF1 plus two for pretty much all, it's a one size fits all type of move. That's what DF1s have always done. They're gonna track towards one side or on a high, high amount of frames or a typical amount of frames, it'll track. And they're just pretty much reliable mid pokes. So you can rely on DF1 plus two to do that. There's nothing to explain here. It does its job. It's extremely reliable. If you want to use a standard DF1 and you don't want to deal with whatever I'm about to explain about DF1 itself, just use DF1 plus 2 the entire time you're playing Huang. The only thing you need to keep track of when you do this is to make sure you're actually pressing DF1 plus 2 because you might press DF1. Because the DF1 plus 2 input is not the DF1 input. So you always have to make sure you're pressing DF1 plus two. So it might take a little bit more effort, but it's negligible. You can just really, it's, it's not an issue to press two buttons at the same time, but it might affect you because a lot of other characters just have a DF1 and it just does the job. Here you have to press an additional button to get it. So yeah, that's the only con I can think of. Literally the only con. It just does its job. All reliable, the best cheese in the world, right? <laughs> Let's go through all the intricacies of DF1, all right? Previously, before season three happened, this move used to be zero on block. It was never negative one. This used to be zero on block. Now it became negative one because they, in season three, they gave Horang 
Dex DF13. Except Dex DF13 was mid high plus eight, while Horang's is mid mid negative two. If you want to know everything about DF13, I made a video about it. Links in the description down below. So this is zero. This used to be zero. And you could squeeze in stuff like a 1-2 or a DF1 on block to 2-F4. That was the, those were the things you could do prior to Season 3. And Season 3 onwards, up to Season 4, you could squeeze these things, but the math is kind of against you. Because if they press a jab after your DF1, you're guaranteed to lose. So what are the other stuff? Now, you did see the pushback earlier, right? You saw the pushback. Massive, massive pushback. What if... This pushback isn't actually that bad. And, you know, you don't complain about it. So we'll have him guard. What if that DF1 was meant to allow you to set up into other stuff like this? Backdash into RFF, DF1 into forward 3, DF1 into F neutral 4, right? What if it's there to give you the space you need and bait them? Bait them to it, right? Whether that be baiting them into an RFF situation, Baiting them into a jab situation, baiting them into a fl left flamingo or a right flamingo situation. So I'm just going to showcase all of these here. We're going to have Huang do these options for us. So if you block the DF1 into jabs, of course, naturally you're going to win, right? So that's not exactly a situation you can win. But however, if you press something slow, let's say in 11 frames, you'll trade. And if you press a 13 frame mid, you're going to lose. So that means it's a very niche situation very very niche so basically they press anything that's 11 above it's de uh, a decent enough thing to attempt not unless you even we want to do a down jab that's viable but just remember you can get low crushed or low parried now if it's against what's this this is the this is the rff one right there's there's a lot of there's a lot of potential with this now let's say you're you're wary of the pushback and that horang back dashes to like catch the thing you're gonna do you could Lose and get punished. See, Huang's getting uh, the indicator for punishments happening, and a lot of your moves could get caught <laughs> if you know you, they catch you just like that. Now, of course, that's not a natural combo. The other one is this is left flamingo, right? Yeah, I, I pressed DF1 there right after his DF1. A little late though, a little late, and I got caught. Let's use a move that really doesn't track. Let's use a let's use a jab. Oh no, Huang and his non. Uh, Abysmal. That's the Horang life. So even if these options exist, it's still difficult to implement. So you have to really catch the timing of the uh, opponent. The same thing goes with the right flamingo. Of course, this is all premised on the fact that they're they're wary of what's going to happen uh, during DF1's pushback. Yeah, that's that's the whole point. The pushback, while it exists for you. The, the Horang who's doing it, it kind of doesn't exactly exist for the opponent. It's weird. It's a weird thing to say. And I probably sound extremely dumb saying that. <laughs> but you're noticing here, every time I'm pressing right after a Horang DF1 on block, uh, a lot of the options the opposing Horang is doing, it, it, it's hard to squeeze in. It's all about timing, really. So that's, that's exactly what I mean by how... It's it, it doesn't exactly exist. You could throw it out there and make sure you, what do you call this? You do a backdash instead. So backdash into DF2. Now that's something, that's a clear way to, to catch catch people. If, if, it had, if DF2 had the range, right? So to demonstrate the range of it, we backdash into back three. So if they just DF1, you, you catch that, you're gonna get a clear punish. Beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful. And these situations can all be replicated at the wall. Provided you're gonna do a backdash or a panic move, it'll be back one, back two. You could do that. And let's just let's just switch the stage to demonstrate some of those situations. We'll go. Now let's see that. And of course, if I jab, see if I press a jab in between, this is perfect at the wall. And the same should apply if I press a yes. Yeah, see, except it didn't wall splat, which is it kind of sucks that it does it. But hey, it's a situation you could use when their back's behind the wall. You can do this in open if you want. I just highly recommend it more on the wall uh, this is the power crush yeah so uh, they're gonna be wary once that power crush in because they want to see if you're gonna do it and then punish but if not right you throw out the power crush then they do you, it's, a, it's a whole nother mix up in itself so it's really layered and uh, you you determine right whether or not you want to use horang's df1 
or you want to just keep, make your life easier and stick with just the standard DF1 plus 2. You're not gonna, you're never gonna go wrong with DF1 plus 2. I can guarantee that. You will never go wrong with DF1 plus 2. DF1, there are some issues and if you don't lab all the small nuances in between it, uh, it's it might go against you. So here, I only went for a brief outline of what you could do with DF1 and maybe explore what the move is kind of meant for instead of like complaining about its hitboxes and whatnot. And in conjunction with the other tools in uh, Horang's arsenal. That was the lesson for today. That was the cheese, the DF1 cheese. Horang's the only, one of the only characters with two DF1s in the game. I've been Frontier, and thank you for watching. Backlash? Mmm, he didn't bite. This should be... No, it's not. It's shit, it's not yet. 6-4, yeah, that's the outcome I would prefer.